Hey guys, um, welcome to another Toolbox Talk. Last time we talked about harnesses and inspections. I will be getting back to that. I've got a few new harnesses coming in and I'm gonna go through the checks and then we're gonna actually put some on the dyno here and go through test loading, various pick points. In fact, a lot of pick points, there's 64 to choose from. We're probably gonna do at least half of those um, just to build up a database on harnesses. Um, until they get through the unbelievable German customs there in the country. It's just I've got to deal with the DHL people and then this week I'll have them. Um, so instead I was building spreader bars and these are the carbon fiber spreader bars. Um, I thought I'd do some talk about this style of spreader bar which is different than a lot of others and I would also um, put one on the, the dyno. It won't be the longest. I'm not going to be able to put a meter or meter 20 on there. Um, just because of the space, I'm not going to rearrange the furniture here. Um, but I'm going to pull test six mil or actually a quarter inch Technora through it with the spreader bar and uh, see how everything goes. Um, so we're going to do that after I'll cut and then I'll pick that up at the end of this while we're doing it. Anyway, these are carbon fiber. They're 25 mil by one and a half. Um, I could get out the charts. Just let's put it this way. In compression, they're incredibly strong. Um, if you were to pick from the center of this, you'd have a definite weight limit. Um, again, we've talked about, we beat to death this whole spreader bar. There's lifting bars, which are a single point center to two, two lines. These are used primarily for spinning. They will have a swivel. Um, they're usually built heavier. This includes the coat hanger variety. This includes all of the self-made CNC pocketed ones. Um, I have some that are actually dimpled and very thin sheet metal that are extremely strong um, with built-in swivels. Um, the coat hangers, the, the only advantage to them is for swiveling. That is what they're all about. Um, you can swivel with these by putting a swivel in line. Um, they are a little heavier, a little, a little more visual if you want to try to get rid of stuff. Um, I always try to minimize the weight of people's stuff over their head. Um, so here's my style. This works for these or with uh, Alu, they're both the same, 25 mil, um, and they work with the same type of ends. And the ends uh, are made thusly. Okay, we have the ID of the tubing with O-rings. We have a hole that actually uses a tapered stopper. This is a tapered hole. It's larger on one side than the other. You wrap these, Stoppers, tapered stoppers around the line, and they push into and lock against the line in the spreader bar. There's no attachment, there's no shackle, there's no extra connections or possible points of failure. It's a single line from above, through the hole, to the performer. So it's one line all the way. This simply does one thing, it spreads the load into two lines. It takes two lines, moves them apart whatever distance you've set. Now, I did it this way because A, I hate listening to shit rattle up top. Um, B, that if you're using a typical plated end, there's two things about it. One, it's a plated end, so it has holes. You put shackles in it. So now you have a shackle at the top single line going through both picks for your top triangle. Then you have two more shackles holding that to your bar. Then you have two more shackles holding your individual lines to the bar, and then you have two on your performer. That's seven shackles all tied up in one rig. The top ones rattle around a lot. Um, you can tape them, you know, common, common occurrence. Um, secondarily, typically the flat plated bars, because they're designed also to put <clears throat> guy wires on, are pulled and moved so they're fixed. They're either, if it's carbon fiber, glued and screwed. If they're steel, they're welded. If they're aluminum, they're either welded or screwed or both. Um, that way you can pull against the, the bar. So for positioning, a lot of times those are used, um, but you're limited to certain lengths unless you carry one of every length. With these, you only need to carry so many ends, and you can see I've got bars in 50 millimeter increments all the way up from 400 to 1200. And the ends, you don't have to carry an end for every one I do because I make them. Um, but you take the ends come out of the bars. You just take the ends out, and so that's a 500. Okay, so I didn't, I didn't think the 500 was wide enough, so I would grab a 550 or a 6 and put the ends in that bar. 
And in that way, I can adjust and I have a kit. I can make what I need. If I need, I carry some short lengths of the same tubing. Now, if I need two 550s and I only have a 500 or a 600, what I'll do is I'll put a 50 piece on and I make couplers that are basically double-ended versions of this that go in. And you can add 100, 50, whatever you want. So you can have double actually what you have in your kit with the simple addition of a small spacer piece. Um, these are designed, they're mic to fit this tubing. This tubing's pretty precision. The O-rings allow it to have a tight fit, um, but it does. It, what it does is it takes the slop out of it and you push them in. Now, since it's a tapered hole, there's a dot on the end that tells you which side goes down because you want the bar sitting down on the plugs. So you put them in and you orient the bar. So in this case, this is the 500. We're gonna pull against it so there's down, the dot is down. This one will look, the dot is down, both bars are up. So now you run your line through here for your top triangle and to your performer. Now remember, the easy way we talked about equilateral triangles, um, if you look at your sling geometry for slinging things, 60 degrees, magic number, 180 degree isosceles triangle on top, which means 60 degrees here, 60 degrees here. So the easy way to figure that, folks, is to take your line and your eye to eye should be as long as your bar. If you do that, then this length is that's in a 60 degree triangle. Okay? So you just it's easy. Make your bar, make your line as long as your bar. Okay? And that way you get a 60 degree, which is one to one on the forces. Once you get shallower than that, you start increasing the forces the bar is gonna see. Um, shallow bridles like this are significantly increased on forces. Look at your loading charts in Jay Glarum's book or any of the other books. They'll give you charts on once you get below 60 in isosceles triangle, it gets flatter and flatter and flatter. How much stress is going on to this? It increases the stress considerably. So you always have to be aware of that. So the simple way to know that is just make your leads on top as long as the bar. Simple. So what I do is uh, I use thimbles, of course, on the top. But what I'll do is uh, with these, you always have to remember because your leads have to include the length of the bar. So when you set them up, you can use multiple leads for different bars, different lengths. Um, you can have a pair dedicated to each one, but performer distances change. Sometimes you don't need to flip over. You just need to spread it for talent so the bar is there and it's comfortable for the picks, etc. But what you need to do is always measure your top. And then when you make your leads, understand with this style, the length of your lead is going to be the length of the bar plus the drop to the performer. Pretty simple. Um, I've said before, I don't like carbon fiber. I use these primarily for, for performers um, or actor talent that is static or floaty or things like that. They don't, carbon fiber doesn't take well to getting bashed around. Um, it's extremely strong. But impact-wise, it has no plasticity, it does break. These are gel-coated, so I can actually see if they've been dinged because the coating will crack. Um, if they're flat or fabric, you can't really see it as well. Um, just some of the reasons why these are shiny. Uh, it gives a smooth feel to it as well, which I like. These ends have just been made, they're just prior to being blacked out, so right now you can see them. Um, doesn't really matter, they're floating out of frame, so it's not a big deal. Uh, it's just with the cost of power and uh, eloxirin right now with, uh, anal uh, with uh, anodizing, you have to wait till you get a certain amount of shit together. And I only made 20 of these or something. So I have to wait until I get a bunch of bars and a bunch of stuff to send it all out to anodizing. Otherwise, it's just exorbitant. Um, there is a coating I use for when I do small loads. I do an oxide coating. They do make an oxide that works on aluminum. I use it. It's kind of like gun blowing. I use it for... Um, the steel, the chromoly steel bars I did for the uh, <coughs> event performers. It's a very nice coating. It just requires a little more maintenance. It doesn't scratch as easy as so. Anyway, so today these are the spreader bars I use. And the way these are run is you would take your eye and you would put it through your bar. You would take the eye and take it to the end and measure it. And then you would hold your finger here. And what we use are, I'm not sitting on them, these tapered rubber plugs, which are split. 
and they get wrapped around the line. Now, this is technically quarter inch line, which is a little bigger than six millimeter. And then those get pulled up in to the device. Now this bar is held in there. Okay, it's rubber, it's sticky. Um, you put the slit away from the force when it pulls in, the rubber insulates the line from any edges, even though they're not sharp inside. And you now have a bar that's stuck in the, the, um, the spreader is now stuck in the line. So you just double check, you feed it through, you measure your length, you mark it, you look for your other uh, device, you put it on your line, and then you push it into your tapers, and you now have, make sure it's pushed in correctly oriented, there, Take this one back out, make sure it's correctly oriented. There. And now you have a spreader bar and it's fairly close just from doing this. So what you do then, just put a little load on it. You can pull these up a little bit through here. Adjust it. Now the bar's anchored, it's not gonna come out. It's level, you're good to go. 60 degree triangle, you're set. And the bar can't go anywhere but up, but because the pressure is all in compression, it's not gonna slide up the smaller triangle. It would, <coughs> if it's turned over, it would eventually drop off down the straight lines, but because of the fact that it's in tension, and right now it's wedged with rubber grommets into these holes, it can go nowhere. There's nothing to rattle. It's quiet, it's simple, it's easy. And you can adjust it at a moment's notice. You need to change lengths. You can play games, you can drop this lower if you want less of a bridle. Um, typically I run the shortest 60 degree bridles on everything. Anyway, that's just today since I was building them in the shop. Um, we're gonna put them on the device. I've made a, a bar for it today to play. And we're gonna have a look at them under tension. All right, so that's just a kit. So you can carry everything from a meter 20 down to 400 millimeter. Uh, it all goes in here. I have a, I, redundancy, I have aluminum or aluminium. And I also have the carbon fiber. They're all the same, everything interchanges. It's just the comp, what the component here is. Um, if someone's doing something that it's gonna be bashing around set or against a building or against something, I'll use the alley, because I or ratchets, or I mean, not that I like that. I prefer, I will say this now, whenever possible, unless spinning is involved, I see no reason to use a spreader bar. When spinning is involved, then this single point's important. Otherwise, you wanna keep people oriented in the direction you have them, always run two lines. It's just as easy to run two lines and bridle it somewhere else to your, uh, mechanical engine, whatever that's a hand pull line or a ratchet or whatever, it's far more effective and far more repeatable. Um, the problem with any single point like this is if you want people to not spin, you're not gonna achieve that. Um, it just doesn't work because it's a single point, so this happens all the time. Now, when you want that to happen, just hook a swivel here, clip in, now you've got a swiveling bar. So, you know, this is just a simple, quiet, easy version I use. Um, I make these, they're, they're quite effective. No sharp edges, no extra material, no flat plates. Um, if I do bridle people, I go off of their harness, um, which is two things. One, if you pull a bar like this, you have a reverse motion. So I pull this bar and the person's gonna sway the opposite way. So you have to look at that, gravity always goes down. So if I want them to move that way, pulling this bar will do some work, but they will also get to a point where they're hanging not ver they will hang vertically, but the bar will be pulled there. It's a, it's a re diminishing return situation. Whereas if I just pull on the performer, this whole thing from the single point up here. 
from the pick point above will pendulum. So if you're going to manipulate people, it's far easier to use lines attached to them as opposed to attached to a spreader bar. Um, there are instances when you can't, when you have to use the bar. And then I will run a slip ring down on these. I will take a friction ring and put it on and pull from here, from the triangle, if I need to. Um, when this is under load, you don't pull these out because the compression, you're never going to pull harder than the weight is pushing in. Um, but, um, like I said, you'll get your best results pulling and manipulating, puppeteering people from themselves. And as you notice, you'll see how these are through. The rubber is through the hole. The grommet is fixed in the hole. It is crimped on the, on the, on the rope itself. Um, they will pull up pretty tight. And now it's fixed in there. Easy to change, easy to deal with. Um, yeah, pretty simple. And the best part is it's super light. The ends, a pair of ends is 100 grams. Um, a meter of bar is 400 grams, 350 grams. Um, so this is a half meter, so we're looking at 175 grams. So this is 275 grams in total, right here, um, plus the rope weight. So this is, this is virtually weightless. It's very nice because it doesn't move around. It doesn't carry a whole lot of its own momentum when you use it. So I use these a lot for a lot of simple flying. Like I said, when you get into stunty performances and bashing around on set, I usually go to the alley. Um, I just take the ends out of these bars and go straight to the alley. Um, but we'll have a look at how strong this, this is just a half meter, half meter will fit on the machine here. So I'll set it all up and uh, I'll go to a little pull test on this and just see what we get. All right. So that's just today. It's a quickie. It's an easy one because I was making these and I thought I'd show you um, how I do it. And I, of course, I do have ones with the plated ends. We use the same format. It's without O-rings. They're split and there's a plate here that has the pick point. That also has two pick points on the end if you want to pull the bars. But those bars are press fit into the alley or press fit into here. And there's a screw hole and they are screwed in. Um, that way they can't be pulled out. Um, I've never pulled one of these out, but um, in principle, it's better if you're gonna do that. The thing I don't like, and what I normally do to avoid the first set of shackles, having a, set of sh having a shackle here, you can't avoid. Here and here on the plates, you end up with shackles. Here and here, you end up with shackles. So what I'll do is I will fit the line to the plate here and here. That eliminates the top set of shackles. It becomes a permanently attached bridle at 60 degrees. <clears throat> and then all you do is change the bottom ends. And you have to use shackles for that. So you've, you've cut it down. Um, you've eliminated two shackles. It works, okay? But these bars are just they're really easy. And the whole concept of the kit is you don't need, if you have six bars and, and six ends, that means at any point you could be using three bars and you can interchange lengths. So you're not like carrying every possible permutation of length. You just swap the ends in and out. It's like, oh, that was not quite wide enough because the person's got a sword going through the front spin. So you add 10, 20 centimeters to it. You just go boop, boop, and you, you set it up right. You know, you get up, you, it allows you to play with lengths. Um, you know, you get away with the minimum you need and no more. So you're not flying a whole fucking pile of stuff above. And this reduces all your overhead flying stuff down to its minimum quantity. It's, uh, like I said, a, a meter of this at 100 grams per end plus a meter of, of this is 450, 550 grams, the whole meter long bar. Um, this is another couple hundred grams lighter. Um, Alley is around 20% heavier. Um, and for the 20%, which keeps it really light, it's still in the, the 600 gram, 700 gram total for a meter length of aluminum. Um, I prefer the durability, but of course I have both. Um, these are excellent for performer flying, um, especially when you have actors and, the, and you're running multiple lines, you're trying to make them comfortable. This, this works quite well, um, really nice. Anyway, thanks, and that's just today's quickie. I'm gonna set this up and I'll just pop back into this tape with no edit, just a, a smash cut. And we're gonna set it up and then do some pull testing, okay? See you in a minute. 
So you can see our setup here. Here's the spreader bar. Right now it's not under tension. I just took it up to where it would sit here. Um, notice I've got a large plate down here, um, some 12 mil uh, steel. I just put holes in it. It's got Wishard 10 mil shackles. I use soft eyes. Um, a lot of performers you will have soft eyes on, especially for what we're doing here. If it was more aggressive, I would probably have thimbles there as well. We've got Technora, Samson Technora here, Tech 12. We're going through the carbon bar with the aluminum ends with the grommets holding the line. You'll see how fixed this line is in here. Okay, it's not going anywhere. We're coming with a 60 degree triangle isosceles to another 10 mil shard to our pulling ram. That end is hooked to the dyno. That end is the ram. Um, so what I'm doing right now is just setting it up. I'm going to pull on this and see where we go with it. Um, it's not optimal. This is 53 millimeter and that's 45 millimeter. Normally you don't want the disc, you want it fairly straight or slightly in because as it comes in more, it increases this compression. I'm not too worried currently about this differential. Um, most people's hips are a little wider than that. You know, that's a 35. And I can tell you right now, I'm more, I'm 45 to 50 if I was to just 45. But if you're doing a, a pick from a, a rib cage pick, um, it's in the realm, you know. We've got about a 10 to 10, 10 millimeter, or 10 centimeter discrepancy from here to here, which I could calculate the angle over distance. It's, you know, five degrees or something. So we aren't improved, we aren't adding that much more to this. Ideally, it would be a little less, um, but, you know, that's just the way the setup is today. Uh, because of this toolbox row that's here and the way the machine is, unless I start moving everything out and building a fixture that's as wide as I need it. So I need another fixture that comes out another, another 200, 300 millimeter, and then I could balance it in the middle. And I will do that later. Um, it's just that was handy and I plas kept that up this morning. It's actually a fixture for other things. Um, so it works right now. Um, and we're going to try it. So that'll be the next step when I turn the machine on and we'll go to testing. All right, we're set on max on the dyno. We have our 50 centimeter bar. Uh, we're going to bring up the tension. And you'll notice it's rotating just because of the picks up front. Everything's settling in. We're at 700 kilos right now. Now, 700 kilos, 1,500 pounds, um, that's a fair amount of force. And you'll see it slipped finally to go down the line because of the angles. It was able to go down the line. And that was at 1,705 kilos. So, you can see at 1,700 kilos, 3,500 pounds, is when the rubber grommet let loose. Now, we had no failure of the line. We had no failure of the bar. All we had was the rubber grommet, because this is an angle, runs narrower, it was able to slide down and leave its position in here. Um, this one, you'll notice, didn't. It's locked in. This one wasn't fully locked in, so at 1,700 kilos, it slipped. Um, 3,500 pounds. Um, you know, this line's good to about 2.2 tons. That was 1.7 tons. Um, for what these are used for, it's, it's excellent. We will try it again and try to reset the grommet and see if we go any higher. Hey guys, um, we're back. I got lazy because I didn't want to refit extra lengths here. What I've done is I've eliminated the grommets. By now I've put a connector below the bar because um, we're we know what the rubber grommets are going to go, 1,700 kilos. Um, didn't come close to the bar, didn't come close to the rope. We know that works. That's, you know, if body weight's 100 kilos, 17 times body weight. If it's a dynamic load, it's still, at 17, it's over three times the dynamic load if you were to use it. Um, and nothing with the bar happened other than this slid. So now, what I've done is to test the bars. I've eliminated and put a connector here, I've eliminated the grommets. I've gone to um, 
Mamas here, Technoras, Technora, because I didn't want to fit extra lengths. I got rid of my shiny shackles and went to some galbies. This is a test setup because we're trying to get to this. And I had some technical difficulties. I've done this six or seven times, but every time I do this with the remote in my hand, it turns it off. So I'm gonna let it run this time. Um, we got some pretty amazing numbers. And uh, I will take it up right now and you can watch the numbers. It's orienting right now. Currently, right now, we're at 3,000 kilos. We're at three tons right now um, with the bar in place. It's as tight as a drum. There's absolutely no flexion on anything. Uh, the bar is not flexing at all. It is stable. Um, that's at three tons. That's at 3,000. Okay, we're at 4,500. And the bar is starting to bow. If you focus on the bar, the bar at four and a half tons with the shackles underneath is now starting to bow. Four and a half tons, okay? The hardware, the mayons that are under it are only rated to 450 working load and 2.2 breaking load. We have two of them. So we are currently well over load on everything and the bar is still holding. You can see how curved the bar is if you look at it. It is deflected fairly heavily. Um, if I was to put a straight edge next to it, you can put a straight edge next to it and see how bowed the bar is. You can see the bar is very much bowed. Okay, that's at four and a half tons. Okay, so that pretty much tells you where we're at, at limit. Um, let me take the stress off of this. So four and a half tons is maximum limit, 4,595 kilos um, for these bars, okay? And that's when you start deforming the bar. Hey, um, welcome back after that fun little test. Um, so what we did was we eliminated the rubber grommets, 1,700 kilos because um, we wanted to test the bar itself. And it, it, get me right, I, I love the carbon fiber bars. They're super light. Um, and 1,700 kilos with the rubber grommet, I feel more than confident using them in most applications. I don't see them lifting what their potential of uh, is, but uh, you know, that 1,700 kilos, I feel very comfortable using. That being said, uh, the failure rate there is not the shackles. It is not the line. It is not anything else other than the Sprinter bar sliding has the ability, because it's not fixed, hard fixed to the line, the ability to slide down the triangle, um, which is a way of relieving stress. Uh, I, I, I'm at 1,700 kilos. I'm not too worried about it. So uh, that's, the, that's the sample on that. So in order to break the bar or get close to breaking load on the bar, we eliminated the grommets and went to a shackle under the bar, which I'd previously mentioned you could do. Um, which is fine, you know, it's, it's, at least it gets rid of a couple of connectors on there uh, if you do it this way. And we set it up, we had a 10 mil shackle on the span set on the pulling head, which you'll notice I can't get out now. Um, it was, uh, yeah, it overloaded uh, in a, in a tri-loading situation on the pin. When the thimbles tried to orient, it was fine and they got caught in there and it basically spread the uh, pin and it bent the pin. So now the pin's bent. But let's talk about what we did. Um, as you saw in the video with the setup, we went to four and a half tons. Now, this is six, six quarter inch, six mil, 6.24 6 mil, um, which is quarter inch tech, which is 5,800 pounds, which is 2.4 two ton, 2.3 ton rated rope MBS. So we were at the MBS on the rope. We used six mil million rapide, which are rated working load at 450 kilos. And we had them <laughs> in an MBS of 2.2 tons, five times the working load. And now uh, we've trashed them. We were at uh, four and a half tons. 
So each we're seeing maximum load here and probably with the Mamba slings is the problem because I can see that it has, has changed the angle a bit when I try to screw the gate together. It has shrunk the connector a bit. So the threads are angled down. Um, so there's two Mayons. We were at load maximum. They didn't deflect. They didn't elongate. They didn't do the things we've seen it when we've broken nothing but Mayons. But they're trashed at four and a half tons. And the bar itself was fine. You saw it bow. You saw it flex at four and a half tons. Um, by the time you see that, I didn't bother to break it because the next step is just it explodes. Um, and yeah, it's exciting and it's fun, but why bother? Um, so at four and a half tons, uh, you know that <laughs> those bars are very strong um, and you're looking at a half, that was just a, a 500 millimeter, a half meter bar. Um, the longer bars, because of the length, will probably bow at slightly less load limit. But uh, I mean, even, even if it's half of that at two and a half tons, 2.2 tons, you're still, you're well overbuilt for what you're doing. It's nice to know what they do. Um, it's nice to know how strong they are. And like I said, I, I love them. They're super light on a bar over someone's house. It's two, three, 400 grams maximum. Um, with the rubber grommets, it's silent. Um, it's easy to change. With the shackles under it, it's only one more set of connectors. So it, there's less, there's, no, there's more points of failure than just two liters, but there's also um, a huge, it's, it's easier for some people and uh, it makes no difference to me. Um, they work equally as well. Um, but you get up to four and a half tons before the bar deflects. Um, so that tells me that we're good to go. And that was today's little experiment. Um, and just know that because of the way we loaded the pin of this shackle, this 10 millimeter with shard is toast. And it's a 10 mil, it should handle it, but because the way the thimble's oriented in the pin, they cocked one another and the thimbles started to stretch a bit. They got a little funny shaped and, and then they pulled the pin. And uh, now I can't get the pin out of the shackle. So this set of leaders will live uh, like this in the trash bin along with all the other broken stuff. Um, anyway, that's today's test. Just so you can see the, the bars, uh, the alley bars are equally as strong. I'm not even gonna bother with those. Um, but at four and a half tons, you're well above working loads, uh, even in catastrophic instances. And even with the rubber grommets, you're well above working loads for what you're using that bar for. So that was our playtime today. And uh, it was a discovery point when we start ruining everything but the bar. So that's today's playtime. Take care.